Stephen, you're one of the founding partners of ATM Consultants, offering tax, accounting, advisory and self-managed superannuation fund services. What motivated you to become a financial planner? Well, I think, Greg, there's a need amongst our clients. A lot of our clients have been our clients for a long period of time and they're starting at a similar age to us, I suppose, and they're starting to think about retirement and what sorts of things they need to get there. So they started asking us those questions and they were pretty adamant that they wanted us to give them that advice rather than refer them out to other people. Um, And um, I think the other thing that probably prompted us into action a little bit is uh, with the the removal of the accounts exemption coming up that we, it, it sort of, meant that we needed to take action on some uh, doing something about financial planning. What uh, research uh, did you do uh, before uh, introducing financial planning uh, to your business? Yeah, I was probably fortunate that I was involved uh, at CPA on a couple of public practice committees and things like that. So I had the opportunity to see firsthand the resources that CPA has in order to be able to make some of those decisions and and there's some good ones on the website and we've had a look at those but also talking to other practitioners and talking to financial planners and uh, uh, so contemplating how we were going to go about it I suppose yeah. What was the process how did you first introduce uh, financial planning to the business maybe give us a a walkthrough? Yeah well we've just just really done it actually it's interesting on the way away here today I got noticed that we've got our first paycheck for our first financial plan we've done so it's good timing in that regard we decided to go down the path of partnering with a financial planning firm Um, we tossed up whether to whether to get our own limited license or even our own full license but thought it was better to partner with somebody that was already in the industry and that gives us access to a whole uh, the, the full suite of financial planning services and a fair bit of assistance in terms of the uh, of the backroom uh, processes and also the compliance sort of processes as well. So so that's the way we've done it. We've partnered with a, with another financial planning firm, and I've become an authorised rep under their banner in reality. So it sounds like it's early days, but what have been the uh, the positive benefits of uh, of introducing financial planning uh, to your accounting business? Yeah, so well, you're right. It's early days as far as the financial planning goes, but I think um, it's going to be a terrific service for our clients. As I say, I think it just broadens the base that we're that we're offering there. There's been some spin-offs too. I think I've started to understand uh, the value of advice, perhaps more so. And I'm I'm clearly now of the opinion that us accountants over the years have undervalued. Uh, our advice, if you like, and, and and you put a financial planner's head on and start looking at things differently and you start to realise that we've been giving a fair bit of advice away probably uh, for, for far less than uh, we should have. Introducing any new advisory steam, stream to a practice uh, requires uh, some investigation of uh, maybe what the negative impacts uh, can be. Were there any negative impacts that you've anticipated to, to address or watch out for? Look, the main thing's been timing, I suppose, or the, the time. It, it, it's a very much a busy time. I think accounting practices are under a fair bit of change at the moment, and so we're going through a fair bit of change in our practice anyway um, to try and make sure we deal with the digital disruption and the, the changes that are, that are coming and turning ourselves into a more advisory practice and being able to compete. So when we threw financial planning on top of that, you know, it just adds to that that mm-hmm. level of change. So it's been significant in that regard. Yeah. From my perspective, it's been a time, it's been very time consuming and probably more than I thought initially. Uh, I probably initially thought, well, I was just adding another service to our business, but in reality, I think I've almost embarked on a whole new career. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting. So you'll continue to provide the accounting services, the ones you've traditionally provided, so wearing two hats, as it were? Well, our firm will. As to what extent I still provide accounting services, personally, will depend, I suppose, how much is in the financial planning mm-hmm. space. And, and uh, we've got other staff who will probably follow me down the financial planning path too. So certainly as a firm, we'll offer both. And I think I think the two will really complement each other. I, I see the financial planning advisory just as part of our overall advisory offering, if you like. So they, they do certainly go together. And I think the two very much complement. I mean, we, we do a fair bit of tax planning and structural planning and that sort of thing now, and it's just a bit of an extension to add the financial planning onto that. Well, on the theme of planning, where do you see your business in five years' time? Yeah, I would have thought in five years we're pretty... Uh, predominantly a, an advisory type business. We will still do compliance obviously and so on, but I would see our compliance work really trying to be the information that feeds into our advisory information. And, and, and I think we'll have a really broad broad suite of advisory services and financial planning will just be one that uh, fits in as part of that. What advice would you give to another CPA who was contemplating becoming a financial planner? 
I think you need to commit to it. I, th I think that's the thing I've really learned. It's, it's not just a little add-on, if you like. Um, there's been a fair bit of time involved. And uh, I think we probably knew that early on to some extent because we decided that uh, we we're, we're a two-partner practice. We decided to do it that one of us needed to commit to that. So, so I'm the one who went down the path. I've done the RG146 and gone through the hoops to become the, the, uh, the authorised rep. But I think, I think you just need to commit to it, allow for the time and put the resources into it to make it work. RG146, going through those hoops, going through those processes, what challenges could you give us an insight into as you went through that process? Yeah, it's a slightly different mindset, I suppose. Uh, I think um, I said a minute ago that, I, that I, I felt that I'd almost embarked on a whole new career, but I, clearly the skills go across both. But there's, there's an awful lot more compliance type work um, in, in, the, uh, in the financial planning space. Uh, so, so that's certainly been a challenge. Um, and a lot more of it needs to be committed to files, writing, plans, etc. So, so perhaps I think that's something I'm trying to get used to where I might have sat down and had a chat with a client from before and spoke about a number of issues and raised some issues. It's now going to be difficult to do that without you know, making sure that's all in writing that everybody's across all that information and they're probably looking for more of that advice anyway. And I think that's very much the RG146 focus. Uh, uh, you know, the, the information, the learning and so on was fine, but there was a fair bit of work in actually putting it all together and putting plans together and making sure all those document, uh, it's all documented there. So in summary, challenges, hard work, but well worth the effort. Yeah, I think so, yeah. And I mean, as I say, it's, it's an area of focus that, uh, f that accounting firms are gonna decide which way they need to go. And I think it's just an add on to what we do. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, it's probably a real space that, uh, from our perspective, our clients are wanting us to provide that service. And uh, so we need to sort of get, get into that space. So. Yeah, certainly a key aspect of the uh, future firm that we're looking at. I think so, yeah. yeah. Stephen, thanks very much. Okay, thanks, Rick. Nice talking to you.